Climb the ladder, get the thing. Use the thing to get the thing. It's that very special time of the year when all of the wrestlers in WWE suddenly forget that they have knees and start climbing ladders using only their arms. There are a couple of things that WWE want you to forget about money in the bank. It was invented by the man in AEW with the Appreciation Society. It tends to be more of a booking obligation than a treat these days, prompting the company to immediately burn the women's briefcase within 24 hours. No, really, that's happened literally every year for the past four years. Alexa, Bailey, Asuka, Nikki A.S.H. Oh, and also so WWE wanted to forget that this year's pay-per-view was supposed to take place in the 70,000 plus capacity Allegiant Stadium, but owing to poor ticket sales, it's now taking place at the MGM Grand, an arena with over 50,000 less seats. Womp womp. But those are all bad things. Let's focus on the good things. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts of Unknown, and here are 10 best WWE money in the bank matches. Number 10, men's 2019. I mean, lol. Look, yes, I know the one thing that everyone remembers about this match is the fact that the great white Mark Chalk Lobster won the whole thing by just entering it at the last minute and golden snitching it out from under several very tired boys who are just put in a proper shift. But focusing on that bit of booking undersells the aforementioned fact that holy hell everyone else in this match gave it socks. Even Baron Corbin looked like a murderer, choke slamming dudes with abandon. Ricochet and Ali are in it, giving supreme flipperoos with the latter are especially deserving of the win after a monster Spanish fly. Randy Orton gets to do his RKO off the ladder shtick. And then there's this, one of the most ludicrously dangerous looking spots in Money in the Bank history. Andrade sunset flip power bombing Finn into a propped up ladder. So stupid, so wonderful. Dodgy finish aside, it's masterful insanity. Number nine, women's 2018. 2018 was a pretty good year for Money in the Bank. The men's was pretty funny with the everyone versus Strowman narrative drawing a few chuckles, especially when Braun just ran through a ladder as Miz to the would face. That match was enjoyable enough, but the women's match felt like more of a consistent team effort. After the previous year's first ever women's match, ending with the case being won by a f***ing dude, this match felt like it had something to prove, and it absolutely did, bolstered by a monster time in WWE's women's division. Ember Moon, Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, Naomi, Alexa, also Lana doing an accolade, which was very funny and everyone liked it. After 2017's outing felt a little safer than the average ladder match, one of the first spots of this one is Ember crossbodying Sasha onto a ladder, and oh god, oh no. Everyone does an amazing job in the match, especially the people who have since walked out of the company. Number eight, men's 2017. I mean, it's primarily a one moment match, but what a moment when AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura come face to face through a ladder. Why do birds suddenly appear? Starts to play and both men put all external context to one side to execute a mini sequel to their vaunted Wrestle Kingdom match from two years earlier. Genuinely, there's more magic in this tiny little spot than in the entirety of their 2018 feud, which is sad in a very big way, but happy in this nice small way. The rest of the match is fun. Nakamura gets the injury angle, then comes back to murder all human life as the crowd serenades him. Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens eat spectacular amounts of shit, which they both have doctorates in. And then Corbin wins two months before the worst cash in of all time double fun. Number seven, WWE Championship 2013. Some matches have found their way onto this list because of the very silly things that people have done vis-a-vis -vis spray painted DIY hardware. Others because of the stories they've told. This is a storyline money in the bank match if you can imagine such a thing. It's a milestone in a number of different storylines that define the company over the next year. Daniel Bryan does another amazing sequence of offense that gets him over crazy hard with the fans for getting screwed yet again. This time by Axel Mania of all things. Randy Orton begins the inevitable Thanos-like journey to that SummerSlam moment by winning the thing after an all-time great RKO to Van Damme, no less. And best of all, Paul Heyman's sudden but inevitable betrayal. CM Punk had his evil personality corrected by an Undertaker tombstone at Mania 29 and came back as friendly old man Logan Punk, which apparently don't pay no bills, leading to the world's least trustworthy farm animal lawyer to red wedding him in front of everyone. And it was beautiful stuff. Number six, WrestleMania 23. Oh yeah, these matches used to happen at WrestleMania, didn't they? To be honest, that kind of makes more sense than being its own pay-per-view. If WrestleMania is the grand finale to the current season of WWE television, then a Money in the Bank winner being crowned is a fantastic tease for the next season. Anyway, WrestleMania 23, a criminally underrated WrestleMania, and its opening match was the Money in the Bank ladder match, which went a whopping 25 minutes, the longest one to ever take place at WrestleMania. But it doesn't feel it. Well, maybe a bit, but most of it is silly nonsense. Jeff Hardy's infamous leap onto Edge, Orton getting to do an 
an RKO party. He loves those. Even Hornswoggle takes a ridiculous bump from the top of the ladder. It feels a bit more unsafe than the more highly choreographed ladder matches of the 2010s. Mostly just dudes huffing ladders in each other's faces. But that's an energy that really gels with the TV14 era. The match was won by Mr. Kennedy and poor Mr. Kennedy. The lad never got to cash it in, getting an injury that turned out not to be as serious as people originally thought. But by then, Edge had already stolen the case off him and cashed it in poor Mr. Kennedy. Number five, 2016. I mean, this is as intricately choreographed as ladder matches get. They build a f***ing superstructure in the middle of the ring, which is supremely dumb in that kind of Ring of Honor, Kevin Owens, Mad Science kind of way. A lot of very fun, violent things happen in this match that don't involve amateur architecture, though. Cesaro jumping from a ladder onto the ropes and springboarding into a European uppercut because Cesaro isn't real. Kevin Owens eating the world's most painful Mishinoku driver from Sammy onto a ladder, returning it in kind later with a powerbomb to Sammy onto the ladder. Dean Ambrose walks away with the win, holds onto the case for less than an hour before cashing it in and finally achieving ultimate vengeance on Seth Rollins, the man who ruined his entire life two years ago. It's fab. Number four, World Heavyweight Championship 2011. Ah yes, the only match that people remember from Money in the Bank 2011. The only match from that pay-per-view, no other match just this one. I'm kidding, of course, that Christian versus Randy Orton match was really good, but let's talk about the SmackDown Money in the Bank match. The Raw one was decent, but definitely a lot sloppier than this one, which featured a whole raft of up-and-comers. Man, between Wade Barrett, D. Bry, Cody, Kane, Sheamus, and Cara, anyone could have walked away with the thing. It's a really well-cast match as well. Hosses like Kane and Sheamus throwing people around. That powerbomb to Sin Cara through the ladder is one of the all-time most gruesome spots in ladder history. The twitching selling afterwards is super scary to the point where it was, wasn't really selling. Then you've got guys like Justin Gabriel, Daniel Bryan flying around. Heck, even Sin Cara manages to not really botch anything, executing a beautiful Spanish fly and springboard to the outside before he's summarily murdered. There's nice little story moments featuring the core telling Barrett to do one. Seamus and Kane hit a doomsday device on Daniel Bryan. Gabriel's 450. It's all very silly and the Chicago crowd are on fire throughout, almost as if they were excited to be there for another match on the card, but we all know that's not true. Number three, 2014. Hooray! It's another story-driven Money in the Bank ladder match. The best one, in fact. Mid-2014 and a whole bunch of storylines in WWE were really clicking, making it one of the strongest years in a while. Chief amongst them was the Authority storyline and the breakup of The Shield, which were both hot fire going into this show, and especially this match featuring Ambrose and Rollins with Corporate Kane waiting in the wings, and the rest of the match being populated by reliable ladder match lads like RVD, Ziggler, Kingston, and also Jack Swagger was there. Hello, Jack. It's a match full of fun spots with a beating heart of pure shield bro hatred to tie the whole thing together and gave any time that the two favorites, Ambrose and Rollins, were climbing the ladder a whole different level of weight. Like, to give you an idea of how invested everyone was, this was the first pay-per-view after the breakup of the shield, the very first one. The crowd erupt when Rollins and Ambrose lock up for the first time. Boo when Ambrose is ejected for injury. Explode when he comes back. Some beautiful spots in this one. The superplex from the top of the ladder. Kofi backdropping Rollins through the propped up ladder is monumentally good wrestling this. Number two, WrestleMania 21. Chances are, if you ask someone to name just one Money in the Bank ladder spot, just one, it would probably be this one. Shelton Benjamin running up a ladder propped up against another to clothesline Chris Jericho from the top. He falls out of the ring. That is so hard to do and Shelton made it look so easy and got an instant standing ovation from the WrestleMania 21 crowd. Joyous. Mania 21, back in 2005, saw the very first ever Money in the Bank ladder match and talk about an instant here. There's only six competitors, but the field is stacked. Kane, Benoit, Jericho, Benjamin, Edge, and Christian. But honestly, Shelton's the MVP here. His plancher out of the ring is perfect. His T-bone suplex to Edge off a ladder, that spot, what a guy. There have been bigger and better spots in a ladder match, but there's just something special in the air about seeing an all-new concept saw, and saw this one did. And number one, men's 2021. Is it recency bias? Probably, but holy sh**, this was such a good ladder match. It had so many things going for it. A brilliant field of competitors with a great blend of powerhouses, high flies, and men willing to take ridiculous bumps for our love, aka Kevin Owens. A molten crowd celebrating the first pay-per-view back with full attendance. And of course, the right winner. Miss you every day, Big E. There's a bit of story in there with Johnny Drip Drip and Sethy Drip Drip's alliance. Someone, aka Kevin Owens, takes history's stupidest bump. A gorgeous didn't know we wanted it till we got it sequence with Riddle and Nakamura ending with a double claymore, a vicious attack from Jinder, Riddle's RKO party, Ricochet's ludicrous tightrope walk into a springboard plunge, a stupid wrestling at its absolute finest, and yeah, Big E won. He won. 
The good dude. The dude everyone liked from inside and outside the company. The dude who deserved it in front of a crowd that wanted to see it. A truly optimistic moment to be a wrestling fan and a crown atop a fabulous ladder match. And that's our list. What's your favorite money in the bank ladder match? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. And make sure you subscribe to Parts of Unknown for more silly wrestling content. Never forget to jam that jam.